Okay, I started with the equation, uh, I'm sorry, with the free body diagram because it's very precise. I'm going to walk through exactly what you're looking at here. But what I have is a five pound ball uh, going along a path given in polar coordinates here. So that gives you a hint of what we're looking at. Okay, uh, gives me an angular velocity, that'd be theta dot, uh, angular acceleration, theta double dot, uh, and a theta of 30 degrees. Okay, and it wants me to find the force of the arm in the ball, it wants me to neglect friction, and the size of the ball, uh, R is given by that. So, again, what I have here is my, my ball, and I'm going to draw a free body diagram. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my vertical, that is 0.5. Okay, and what I know is based on this 30 degree angle given here with my uh, my R effectively, right? That's that bar there, right? If that's 30 degrees, that makes with the horizontal, or if that if it's 30 degrees with the horizontal with the vertical, that angle is going to be 60 degrees. So that's where that 60 degrees comes from, right there. Okay, now I have f of r. This is perpendicular to, I'm sorry, I said f of r, I meant f of theta. That's going to be perpendicular to the rod that's rotating here. That's actually going to be in the theta direction because, again, r is going to be going out from my point zero, right, along, you know, OA there, right? And theta will be perpendicular to that. That's what's pushing it. Now, I also have a normal force on the... Um, circle the semicircle that it's going on right keeping it on that path that's going out in this direction that would actually be more of a norm well i guess my normal would actually be pointing back towards the center but it's in that along that same axis right there and this guy is moving in the tangential direction that i have given right here again perpendicular to that normal force on that curve there that's what i have here okay now I've got things in the normal direction. I've got things in the theta direction. I have a thing in the y direction or the z direction, the vertical direction, right? I have one relationship. I've got that 60 degrees between the vertical and the r or the negative r direction. The other thing that I want to find or that I can find is the relationship between the normal and tangential axis and the polar axis, okay? And that's where we get the, the value psi as given in the book. And that's the angle between the r and t axes this is given as psi that big angle right there okay and in the book they tell you that tangent of psi is equal to r divided by the derivative of r with respect to theta okay so plugging that in i know r okay is given as 2 times rc which is given to be 0.4 times the cosine of theta, which is 30, as given in the problem there, okay? The derivative of r, okay, is just going to be 2 times that r, 0.4, but now I'm going, instead of cosine, I'm going to go sine, and it goes negative when I take the derivative. Now, Again, I'm not doing a time derivative. This is derivative with respect to theta. So this just, you know, goes from cosine to negative sine, like so. Okay. And from that, I take an inverse tangent of that. Maybe I do it that way. I say this will become the inverse tangent of all of this. Okay. And that's what psi is going to be. And from that, I find that psi is negative 60 degrees when I plug that into my calculator. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, what does negative 60 mean? Well, that is basically telling you, instead of from R to T, it will go from negative R to T, which will be this angle right here, which we will call the 60, right? So I could think of psi as 120, or I can think of it as negative 60. It's just the nature of how um, these, uh, you know, tangents work, okay? Calculator gives me one answer. There's an infinite number of answers I need to interpret. Okay, negative 60 rather than from R to T, it's from negative R to T gives me that 60. So that angle that I just drew in there is 60. Now, from all of that, I have a free body diagram that I can start applying my uh, equations of motion to.
Okay, so I'll go ahead and right here, I'll start summoning my forces in the R direction. And in the R direction, I'm going to have uh, N, and that will be cosine of 30. Okay, so again, hopefully you recognize that from here to here is 60. So from here to here is going to be 30. I mean, you can kind of piece your way all the way around here every piece and it'd be 60, then 30, then 60, and then 30, okay? So that's where the cosine of 30 comes from in the R direction, okay? Then I have the 0.5, that's going in the negative, and that would be the cosine of 60. And again, I get that from this angle right here. Again, different 60, that's based on the fact that this is 30 and relative to the horizontal, so it's 60 relative to the vertical, and I get that. And then what that equals is the mass, which is 0 0.5 divided by 32.2 times the acceleration in the R direction, which we're going to have to find uh, in a second. Okay, so I'll do the same thing in the theta direction. Okay, where in the theta direction, I've got my force in the theta direction, F theta, that's one thing that I'm trying to find. I have N, this would be sine of 30. Flip that from the R direction. And then I do the same thing, flipping the, the weight of this guy to sine of 60, like so. And then that's going to equal the mass, which is 0.5 divided by 32.2 times the acceleration in the theta direction. Now, I need to now go through and figure out, okay, well, what is R, R dot? You know, I need to find A, R, and A theta. So we'll start by going, okay, well, R is 2 times 0 0.4 times the cosine of theta. Okay, R dot then becomes negative 2 times 0, right? These are just constants. I pull out the derivative. Now I'm taking a derivative with respect to time. So I pull out the theta dot, and then cosine goes to sine. I've got the negative out in front there to go from cosine to negative sine when I take a derivative. Okay, Going one step further, our double dot then becomes negative 2 times 0 0.4 times theta double dot sine, and then minus. 2 times 0 0.4, and then it'll go theta dot squared times cosine. Hopefully, we've done enough of these time derivatives now where you're following along with that. Okay, so theta, again, we know to be 30 degrees. Theta dot is given in the problem statement of 0.4 radians per second. Theta double dot is 0.8. Okay, from that, I can then say, okay, AR equals R double dot minus R dot squared, and theta, A theta is R theta double dot plus 2 R dot theta dot. From that, I can find that the accelerations are, well, before I find the a r and a theta i need to go through and calculate r r dot r double dot and when i do that i get r is 0 0.693 plugging in what i know about theta theta dot theta double dot i know r dot is negative 0.16 and i know r double dot is negative 0 0.43. So from that, I can then plug in these values and find a r and a theta, and I get a r equals negative 0 0.542, and a theta is 0 0.426. Taking those values, plugging them up into the top equations, I first determine that my normal force right? That's the force that the path, the semicircle is placing on the ball, is 0 0.279. Uh, that would, I was going to say newtons, but this is actually pounds. And then knowing that, 
as well as a theta, I can find that the force F theta, this is the force that the rod places on the ball, is going to be 0 0.3 pounds. Okay, so there is a lot there. Okay, uh, the main thing here is recognizing how a the tangential path and the radial axis in my polar coordinates are related, and that's using that psi that I have there. Once you have that, then I can, with my free body diagram, use sines and cosines to relate normal forces with, you know, the r and theta directions. Okay, uh, then I have to go through find your r dot r double dot all that stuff to figure out my accelerations in the r and theta direction. From that, I can then solve for the values. So a lot going on here. Hopefully you're able to follow that without too much uh, hassle.